Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. My name is Susie and I love to share with you guys my vintage booth. I love to do thrift store shopping and thrift flips and sell the items in my booth and I like to show you guys how I do that. If that's the kind of content you like, I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel and don't forget to ring that notification bell so you know when I upload a new video. Now let's get on to today's projects. In this week's video, we're going to be doing some patriotic, primitive uh, thrift flips. I got this rolling pin, really cheap. I never pay more than $3 for a rolling pin, but I think I got this one for a dollar. And I ordered this mesh stencil from Amazon from Maker's Studio. I just thought it would be fun to try. If any of you have ever used a mesh stencil before, be sure and let me know about your experience. Before we get started with the stencil, I am going to be painting the inside of the rolling pin with Dixie Bell Terra terracotta clay paint or terra clay paint in the color blue moon this is a beautiful blue color um, i would have loved to use my fusion i have a color called liberty blue and then i also have a red color called fort york red those are both available on my website i'm not using them today because i just couldn't just about justify opening up a new can of paint when I had these two perfectly good colors. But the great thing about Fusion is you don't have to seal it. These are chalk paints that I will seal when I finish this rolling pin. So I got it all painted up. I painted the handles red. Uh, this is Dixie Belle Barn Red. Um, these colors look really good together and I'm so excited to be doing all these different colors in today's video. So I'm going to be using the stars on the rolling pin from the mesh stencil. I just cut down the piece that I wanted to use and it is self-adhesive. Um, it sticks down pretty good. And then I also used some painter's tape for to go around the edges so I didn't get any white paint on to the blue. And this first application, I just pressed it down really good and um, there was absolutely no bleed through, but once I got the first application done, I was going to go all the way around the rolling pin, and I never could really figure out how to get the mesh stencil cleaned off. Um, if you guys have any tips for that, please let me know. I was able to get it done, but some there was a little bleed through and didn't come out as good on the rest of the rolling pin as this first application. I'm sure it's just like everything else and it gets easier the more that you do it. Um, I'm just using some white chalk paint and a regular um, foam brush to brush over the stencil and removing it while it's still wet and look how great this first application come out so i dried that with the dryer the heat iron and then i went all the way around the rolling pin and let it dry once the rolling pin had dried really well i distressed it with a 220 grit sandpaper and sealed it up with a tough coat sealer from Fusion. And I started to put some ribbon or something on it, but I just really liked this rolling pin just the way it was. Put a tag on it and put it in my booth and forgot to take a staged up picture with it. So these pictures that you'll see the completed one are in my booth. Stay tuned in this video. I am going to show you the new booth and give you an update on that as well. project I got this really tall wooden pedestal I guess it was a plant stand um, it had been sitting outside for a while you could tell the wood was really brittle and it had this big crack in it 
I could have filled it with some wood filler, but I had the IOD clay handy. So I just took a little bit of IOD clay and pushed it in that really big crack, let it dry, and then came back with some sandpaper and sanded it all smooth. We're gonna do some milk paint on this. I, I'm gonna be using the Fusion Milk Paint in the color London Fog. It's like a off-white color. This pedestal was also very rough and had lots of texture on it. So I knew I probably wasn't gonna be hiding that, getting a really smooth finish. So I also added in some of um, the Fusion fresco texture powder to give a little bit more texture to this pedestal. To mix the milk paint, you just do half milk paint and half warm water. And then I just also added a little bit of the fresco in, stirred it up really well. I let it sit for about 20 minutes or so to let it thicken up some, but milk paint is still always very, um, wet. It's going to drip. You're going to think that it's going to be horrible, but, but just keep going with it. It's very easy to paint with. It goes on really easy. So I ended up doing about two and a half coats on this. I probably should have done one more. After I came back and distressed it, you could still see some of the wood grain underneath it, but I kind of like that look. It was more just a white wash like you would see back in the old days before they had all this amazing paint pigments like they do now. Um, but I did two coats and then dried it with the heat gun after the second coat. Did one more um, or at least a half of another coat and then I'm going to heavily distress this with a 220 grit sanding block. This may not look very patriotic, but it's definitely very primitive by the time I get done with it. I, like I said, I'm gonna heavily distress this and the paint is very opaque almost. You can see a lot of the wood grain through it and I love that about it. Kind of looks like it's not fully covered, but it's still, I love the way it looks. To finish this off, I had thrifted a bunch of these woven charger plates. A while back, I really don't know what I'm going to do with them, but I thought it would be neat to give this a larger top to sit a plant on or something. So all I'm going to do is Gorilla Glue that charger plate on the top of it. And then this cute little plant pedestal is finished. And like I said, I love how it turned out. And at the very last minute, I decided to uh, put a little embellishment stamp on the bottom with using the queen bee stamp. I didn't film that, but you can see it here in the after pictures. Before moving on to the next project, I want to give you guys a sneak peek of my new booth. I worked so hard getting it all set up. It's much larger than my previous location. And as you know, I am a fusion retailer now. So I have a full line of fusion paints, milk paints, and even the metallics, top coats, brushes, so much. Everything that you would need to refinish a product project. I have all this listed on my website too, susieonthefarm.com. If you're needing anything, these so many beautiful colors. And then I have all the IOD stuff on another wall outside of my room. I have it fully stocked. And I'm just going to let you guys see a little tour of the whole booth.
thanks for watching this tour of my new booth. Now let's get back to the projects. One of my favorite things to do is any kind of bottle or jars. I hardly ever throw any away. This one was a peanut jar. And then of course, I always have a pickle jar or two laying around. So the first thing I did was get all the labels off of these. We are going to be using the primitive mold. I have been dying to get my hands on this and start using it. I took both the jars outside and gave them just a quick one coat of spray paint to give it a little bit of something to stick to. And then I'm going to use cornstarch to dust all the molds that I want to use. I really don't know exactly which ones I'm going to use, so I'm just pretty much going to dust up the whole thing. I know I want to use those birds and the flowers, and I really just want to get as much as I can on these jars. Just really make them look really primitive and fun. So I'm using IOD clay and the IOD molds are so easy to use. You just put the clay in there and then push it out and rub the edges clean and they come out with so much detail. I love using clay or resin in these molds. It's so easy. I'm using clay here because I am going to do on a rounded surface and I want them to dry on the surface so they take the shape of the jars. So I'm just gonna mix up all these clays and then I am going to use tight bond quick and thick glue to glue them directly onto the jars, the reason that I use the top bond glue is because it has a little bit of an instant hold, whereas Gorilla Glue will slide around some, but the top bond glue will kind of hold enough instantly to keep things from sliding around on these jars while the glue is drying up. So I did uh, both the little birds and I did two of the little, I think it's wheat leaves or branches and those were the hardest ones to get out otherwise it's super easy to get these molds out most of the time you just kind of let gravity do it and you can bend the molds as you're going and they just pop right out You definitely want to make sure that all the edges are stuck down to your surface, but you don't want to push down hard on your wet clay because you'll remove a lot of that detail. So just kind of lightly tap around the edges and make sure everything is stuck down to your surface. After I got these glued on, I did give it just a little while to dry, but not long because I did want to paint the clay before it dried. In my experience, if I paint the clay when it's wet, I have way less cracking. So I'm gonna be using, using Fusion in the color Cashmere. It's this really soft off-white. So I'm just gonna go over the entire jar and I even have to take a little detail brush to get up next to a lot of the um, molds. I am using the pointed sash brush from Fusion and it is my favorite brush, but I don't have a smaller one. I wish I had a little bit smaller one to use. I mean, I have a bunch, but I don't want to open another smaller one. So I'm just gonna use a little detail brush here to go in a little few of the cracks. Once the paint has dried on both the jars, I am going to come back in and just do a dry brushing over the molds. And I'm going to be using that same um, Dixie Belle Terra Clay paint to do that. And um, dry brushing is really all about practice. It's super easy. All you do is wet your brush and then use it a paper towel to wipe most of the excess off. 
and then just gently go over your moles and just hitting all the high spots. Dry brushing hits the high spots on things where waxes and stuff will settle down in the cracks. So I definitely wanted to hit the high spots on all of these beautiful, very detailed molds. This gives it the patriotic, primitive look that I was going for. And I absolutely love how both of these jars come out. I can't wait to set up a little vignette in my booth for the 4th of July season. Moving on to our last project and my favorite. I've had this chair in my stash for a while and I love the leather on the seat and it has that primitive look of it that goes with all the other stamps and molds that are in this new release that I absolutely love. We are going to paint the chair with the barn red from Dixie Belle and then we're going to embellish that leather with some blue and we're going to do some stamps. First of all, we're gonna give it two coats of this red paint. painting the chair red I'm gonna go over that leather with the same um, blue moon terra clay paint this is a very 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 matte paint at first I started going around the little uh, tabs but then I realized it would be just as easy to paint over them and then go back and distress them back It did only take one coat of paint, and as you can see, it's already drying there by the time I finished it. Once the paint is dry, I am going to stamp a lot of stamps with this new Pennsylvania Folk Stamp. It's very primitive looking, and at first I was just going to do the flowers, but then I just got carried away, and I just kept stamping and stamping with the white ink and I love the contrast of the white on this red. I do go back and try to antique it some after we're finished, but I really did love the bright white on this. So I did these flowers and I did flowers on the top and then I decided that we should do a little border because this stamp set has all these really cute uh, border embellishments that you can use as well. So I just kept stamping until I got the chair just like I wanted. And then I sanded and distressed and I sealed this all with, um, I think I used a hemp oil. No, I used um, regular 
clear wax and then went back over this with a dark wax just to darken up the white just a little bit and um, give some more contrast on that seat. I'm so happy with how this chair comes out. I almost hate to sell it, but it really doesn't go with the style of my house, but I know someone is going to love it. What do you guys think? I hope that y'all have enjoyed um, all these primitive and Americana thrift flips today. Don't forget to do a thumbs up on this video if you like it and subscribe so you don't miss what's coming up next week on my channel. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you again next week.